What are the crucial issues for countries and companies to address in order to improve the state of the world in 2010? There has been so much that has occurred in the state of the world and so many forces that are pushing on this, this challenges that occur between companies and themselves, companies and countries, and the whole notion of globalization. And because of these forces, it's becoming so much more complex to solve these issues. And I think one of the big things to do is to actually get some of these issues on the table. For example, globalization and, and the want, in some cases, for protectionism are at, our, are at odds with one another. Companies, by definition, so many of them here in attendance at the World Economic Forum, are global companies. Sitting in a country that really has governance only over that country. Once we try to understand that there is these transversal forces that are happening out there and actually put them on the table, I think that we can get back to where we had been before, which is good constructive social dialogue between countries between countries and companies, and between companies and companies. Once we can construct some of that, the collaboration, and it really begins down the path of the collaboration, we can begin to really address some of this tension that's in the system. Because right now, based on what we went through in 2009, the tension's too great. As a result, we've got to relieve some of the pressure. And one of the ways to relieve the pressure is to put some of these issues on the table, these conflicting issues. But unless we discuss those, we're really not going to get to the root of the cause, which is making it a better place. What do you think will be the role of women in rethinking, redesigning, and rebuilding the economy? Where we are and where we've come from in 2009 really puts us at, at an inflection point for women entering and really becoming a major part of the solution in getting us out of where we are now and into a greater economic growth. When you look at some of the statistics, it's very compelling to look at the number of university students that are graduating that are women, number of undergraduates that are women, number of K through 12. It does not match up with what you see in the workforce. As a result, it is a massive untapped talent pool waiting to contribute to making the world better and making businesses better. Various countries have different kinds of histories associated with that. When you look at our own company, where we have 40% of our executive management team is women, 70% of our entire company are women. What we've been able to do is really look at where is the talent, where is the capabilities that we need, and draw from that pool of people. And I think what we have been able to see is that our company makes better decisions, more balanced, stronger decisions that actually have a longer sustainable view to them. So we can look at it from kind of a, a, a case of one and say that it's been very successful. When we move into 2010 and 11, the role of women in this recovery and the role of women in the future economies of the world will be much greater and must be much greater based on the demographics and some of the talent mismatch that occurs. So I really think that right now is a time to really catapult forward and really make the right moves, both in government and in businesses, to have women play a larger role in the success of the future. Given the current economic environment and the dramatic increase in unemployment, what issues need to be addressed to strengthen global and local labor markets? We really are at a very critical point because what we have seen in almost all geographies, with maybe the exception of some of the very fast growing emerging markets, is a real decline in the employment numbers, which is really putting a lot of people in a dislocated environment where their, their skills and past skills may not be useful when they go into to this new economy. And I don't mean that the economies are changing that dramatically, but we are seeing industries that are restructuring and we're seeing companies that are restructuring, which is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the talent and the way companies are looking for talent. So we've got an issue of talent mismatch, where the person's skills, the individual skills, and what the companies are looking for may not be matched up. So there clearly is a role for companies to be much more active in developing people and making clear what they need from people. That's where governments can also step in and say that I can fund technical schools, I can fund the kind of education and training programs that companies are looking for. And of course the individual plays a great role in this as well. And they have so much at their disposal when it comes to technology. The use of social networks, the use of online training, the use of finding what's available in the world, whether it be the job description that you might, might work for you or the kind of company that may work. So in other words, you have the ability to be much more mobile than in the past. 
So this future, when we look at 2010 and 2011, it really is about getting that individual connected with the right jobs. Of course it's about job creation, which is the unencumbered growth that companies need. They don't need to be burdened with the things that do, do not apply to their business. So that's a major thing. But then the individuals matching up with that company are also critical. So when you look at really what are the core issues, the issues are very dramatic. How do you get people back to work? How do you make sure that that talent that is out there now does not become antiquated? And the way to do that is to make sure that there are bridges to employment, short-term bridges and the ability to get different kinds of exposure into it, and also have the help from governments and companies in stepping up and making sure that there's training available and mentorship available. What are the actions that business and global leaders must undertake to create an effective corporate values framework? When you look at the situation that we're in right now, businesses really have to take care that their values mean something. Because if they don't have the meaningfulness, what, they, what it doesn't do is it doesn't translate into the kind of talent that is attracted to the company. Our surveys show over and over again that particularly the younger generation, but it is actually more than that, really want to be part of an organization that is value-based and contributing to society. So when you have those two and you talk about it and you actually live that, you start to create an employer brand that really pulls people into you. And you can't start that too early. What we have seen over and over again is after a downturn, companies don't react fast enough to making sure that they repair their employer brand because they have the access to ready talent. But that talent is going to be soaked up much faster than what it was before. And I'm differentiating talent and number of people because you really have a talent mismatch that's occurring now. So you may have the number of people that are unemployed that you might be able to grab and pull in. You don't have enough of the ready talent that you need. And in fact, what we would surmise and really come down to some deep conclusions on is that access to capital was the way companies grew in the future, and that still is important, but it's access to talent. It's talentism that is going to drive the competitiveness of companies and drive that ability to really move their companies forward in a sustainable way. So it is all based on the values of a company in really living them and explaining them and having them be known throughout this technology world over the internet and in play within a company that is going to define the brand of that company and really define its ability to compete in the future. What issues are at the top of your agenda for the annual meeting in Davos? Well, it's very simple. Uh, when you think about our company, it's all about jobs. It's all about people, their abilities, and their talent, and the jobs. So on our agenda is to make sure that we don't put false barriers in front of there. That what we're not doing is creating over-regulation or under-regulation. That also, at the same time, companies are recognizing their role in that. So when you really look at the future of the workforce, where it's going, and all of the forces on the future of the workforce, our agenda is simple, is to make sure that companies are aware of what's in front of them, to make sure that governments are aware of what challenges they may be placing on companies or individuals, kind of in unintended consequences. So we want to raise the awareness of that. And we also want to make sure that people understand, and companies and governments understand, there's this marvelous platform called technology whether it be through the role of social networks, whether it be through the role of online education, online training, online job finding. All of these things are out there. And our view is, is that these are some of the most critical issues that we face right now to make sure that we don't put any kind of barriers in the way of creating an environment where the talent can be used and people can really be put back to work to create a more vibrant society. It is that simple. So we really have a mix of, of commercial responsibility and social responsibility. And when we combine those two, you really get the essence of manpower.